Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Weather Center Nazario. We're doing things a little bit differently today because my regular camera, my Sony ZV-1, is officially dead altogether. We have no battery life in that thing, and it cut off within the first 30 seconds of me trying to shoot this segment. So forgive me if this perspective seems a little weird. I'm actually shooting this off of my iPhone instead with my Samsung microphone still plugged into OBS. So you will have the screen shared right over here, so you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But forgive me in advance if this perspective seems a little funky for the video. We're going to dive right in, guys, but first, please like, share this video, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and please tune in tonight. We've made a modification to our Tropics Talk. I will be unavailable tomorrow evening, so tonight we're going to host an 8 p.m. Tropics Talk live on the channel, and I hope to see you guys there. All right, so I have our 12 Zulu European models scrolling through on a loop because there's now not one but two different areas I want us to be paying close attention to. The first one is the simple area in question that we've been monitoring over the last several days in the Southern Caribbean, you can see now that we have a full-fledged low-level cyclone down to 1,002 millibars forming up and moving towards the island of Jamaica. That's where the track gets a little uncertain. We'll talk about the steering currents and where the ensembles and current projections do have it going currently. We also have this other system up there in the Gulf, a bit of frontal tail energy that's expected to spin up and not only provide some additional drought relief for the Gulf Coast, but could create a low-level spin as well, pushing towards Florida towards the back end of the run. So these are going to be our two primary areas we want to focus on. We have our area down here in the Caribbean alongside all that tremendous onshore flow that's still expected to buffet Central America, especially Belize, Nicaragua, and Honduras. We are starting to see some preparations take shape down in Costa Rica as well as that system begins to develop in the extreme Southern Caribbean, which is good news. I've had a few of you reach out to me via the comments and mention that you guys are making the necessary prep work just in case you see those cataclysmic flood conditions make a return, not only with this system forming up, but with that tremendous prevailing easterly direction funneling all that moisture into your general area. All right, so first things first, we're going to go to our ensembles. I've been noticing a lot of folks out there using our operational models, but to tell you the truth, I swear a lot more heavily by our ensemble products before we have a system take shape. The ensembles for mid to long range forecasting are always going to be a little bit more reliable than our deterministic models because we have the ability to manipulate them as they go through time, whether it be the mid range five to seven day out, all the way out to seven to 10 days more long range forecasting. I tend to lose a little bit of faith in terms of our regular models trying to spin things up before we have an organized system just because they tend to deliberately re-intensify things, over-intensify things, or almost under-forecast them for that matter like we've seen countless times this hurricane season. So we're looking at our Euro ensembles. This is for 12Z and you can see that the agreement for something developing not only in the Gulf of Mexico now that is not necessarily going to be tropical. Not thinking we're going to have another tropical disturbance out there but a little bit of leftover vorticity not only in the upper levels translating down to the surface but the tail end of a frontal boundary that's going to have some leftover energy brewing up over the Gulf of Mexico very similar to what we saw back near Friday the 13th of October when we had that system work its way through the Gulf of Mexico towards the panhandle and portions of the Florida Peninsula. As you get to the midway of the loop you can see we already have widespread agreement that something is going to take shape down in the Caribbean push towards the Cayman Islands or Jamaica alike and that's when things get a little dicey because you can see just out ahead of it we have large areas of orange shading, which indicates high pressure over the parts of Bermuda and the Western Atlantic. That has been holding there for quite some time. So some of our models, and I'll show you that here in a moment, want it to suddenly jog west. Others want it to punch straight through as that other system begins to move its way through the Gulf of Mexico, propagating east, opening up an area of path of least resistance for it to travel due east-northeast. So it's either one of two directions I believe it's going to have, guys. It's either going to translate straight up and out of the Caribbean, or it's going to kind of wander back this way and die as that new area of upper-level wind shear really begins to take hold. You finish up the loop, and you can see that there's only a couple different directions this could possibly go, and the stronger solutions do have it dive-bombing straight into the Atlantic, headed possibly possibly towards Bermuda, towards the extreme back end of this run, approaching you guys out there between the 19th and the 20th, other ensemble members do actually have it trying to punch into the Gulf of Mexico. So we do have quite a bit of margin of error. I'll go ahead and draw it here for you guys. It could come up as far to the northwest as this, or it could travel as far to the east-northeast as this. So for interest out there in Haiti, Jamaica, Cayman Islands, Cuba, the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, and Florida for that matter, particularly South Florida, we're talking the Keys and maybe the southeast 
periphery, we want to keep an eye on this, mainly just for an area of disturbed weather. I'm not really looking at anything intensifying out of the extreme with this, but it's still worth paying attention to because we are now seeing a full-fledged low-level center of circulation forming up on all of our models. Now, again, we don't have 12Z Euro probabilities in, so we're going to lean back on the 0Z again. You can see our probabilities have not changed at all over the last several days. They have increased a little bit, but nothing dramatic, guys. As you get to about 192 hours to 216 hours out, we're sitting pretty right at about the 65, 70 percentile. And this has been this way for the last 72 hours, I would say. Sitting right at about 70 percent. We haven't seen any further increases since then, I'll be honest, which is both interesting but also particular with this type of system because it seems like the euro is also struggling with whether or not it's going to fully consolidate and become a concentrated tropical cyclone or remain an open low pressure, more broad in its amplitude, broad in its overall structuring, as well as how much rainfall it's going to produce. And then, of course, we're not going to look at the GFS operational model, but I want us to look at the ensembles. And guys, the main reason I'm keeping GFS out of this is because if you've been paying attention to the timestamps, it wants to develop the system sometime within the next three to four days, as early as the 13th or the 14th of November. And if you pay close attention to, if you rewind this video back to where I was running the Euro loop, the Canadian model, the Korean model, the UK model, and the ICON, all those model platforms agree we will likely see cyclogenesis sometime between the dates of November. 17th and the 18th. So I'm really not paying too much attention to the GFS. The only thing I'm kind of pulling away from it is the fact that we are likely to see development and that's kind of about it. I'm not looking at intensity, direction, track, etc. with that model, particularly outside of maybe some steering dynamics and cross-referencing or initializing them with other models. Nonetheless, we're looking at our GFS ensembles because the ensembles are definitely going to do us a bit more favors in terms of looking at its track and its development. And if you track this through time and you watch the time timestamps above, guys, look at how the GFS ensembles are a little more in line with what the rest of our models are thinking. Sometime around the 15th, maybe the 16th, we finally get cyclogenesis, and we begin to see propagation of the system towards the island of Jamaica, Cuba, headed east-northeast predominantly through most of its life cycle, right at about the 17th to the 18th. So this lines up a little bit better in comparison to its operational model with what all of our other platforms are thinking. With a general consensus, we could try to see it sneak into the Gulf, a couple of members agreeing we could see a low-level center of pressure forming up just to the south of Louisiana as well, and then moving off either straight out into the Atlantic or fizzling out as it tries to enter the Gulf and do battle with all of our subtropical jet wind shear. All right, we're looking at the Canadian model, the 500 millibar level, so we can not only look at steering flow in the upper levels, but also see what's influencing both of these distinct cyclonic circulations that we're looking at on our models, both in the Gulf and in the Caribbean. As you take this through time, you can see we have a lot of leftover vorticity down there a lot of it. I know it doesn't look like anything organized fairly weak, but all these little slivers or slices of yellow energy are in fact instability and in rising air or spinach in the very uppermost portions of the atmosphere, 500 millibar level. And then if you'll also look over into the Gulf of Mexico, look at how we have a very, very potent trough digging in across the south that's going to help to up our rain chances pretty significantly for Texas, Louisiana, and further eastward until, of course, you get to about the Florida point. Maybe we'll see this change if we do get a system to start to organize a low pressure for that matter in the Gulf of Mexico. Hopefully we'll see our rain chances go up. As of right now, it's still a little on the fence. We're trying to feel that part out as we go, but you know, it looks like the probabilities are increasing for us. But as you check this through time, and we see what entirely shakes out, we are starting to see a bit more of a tropical representation, particularly with our feature down in the Southern Caribbean. The last couple of days, if you guys were looking at 500 millibars, whether it be in my video segments or just on your own time, a lot of the models had a large cluster of cyclonic turning vorticity out there, more indicative of an upper level low, or a cyclone that translates from the upper levels down to the surface, which is almost backwards in terms of what we want with tropical development from the ground up. Now we're starting to see a bit more consolidation and our models are in agreement that we could see something much more smaller scale, which indicates a tropical feature trying to get its act together. And also if you pan up over to the southeast, you can see a lot of that trough and that very, very weak low pressure that's expected to propagate towards Florida is situated over top of us. And I do think that that trough in the upper levels is going to interact with our system down there in the Caribbean and try to influence not only its intensity, but its overall track. 
You can see as we get towards the tail end of the run, there's almost two distinct areas of vorticity you want to watch for. Down here over Central America, unfortunately pummeling them with more flooding rainfall, as well as this other feature that's really wrapped up in of itself. And if you look closely, you can see just out ahead of it, there's a very, very broad ridge. That is likely why the model wants to try to give it that bit of a west-northwest bias towards the back end of the loop. If you come over here to the surface and look at the mean sea level pressure, you track this through time very quickly, you can see all of the widespread precipitation chances already going up for Central America. And take a look out there over the Gulf. We're looking at widespread showers and storms for Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. So good news on the horizon for those of us out here wishing for rain and praying for rain along the Gulf Coast and here in the Sunshine State. As you take it to the back end of the loop, here we go, cyclogenesis occurring right at about the time we mentioned earlier, 17th into the 18th of November, and watch how it tracks towards Jamaica, tries to deepen down a little bit more, and then make a bit of a jog to the west, and I think that's in response. If you look to the north here, there is a void over Florida at this time, with high pressure reaching in from the Atlantic, and then another frontal system out here, occluded frontal system at that, coming in all over the central and southern plains. So there's your path of least resistance right there, at least according to the Canadian model, which is why I think we're seeing this split difference between our Euro ensembles, the GFS ensembles, and predominantly what the Canadian model's been sniffing at as well. Last but not least, we'll go ahead and look at the icon, and as we take this 500 millibar chart all the way through, you can once again see a representation of a low spinning up with all that upper level vorticity helping to induce that circulation over the Gulf. And as you get towards the very tail end of this loop, you start to see a consolidated feature down there in the Caribbean. Caribbean. And once again, you can see as that trough makes its way across the southeast, probably impacting a little bit of the mid-Atlantic region as it does so as well, we see it starting to draw in. So initially, it looks like it wants to boomerang straight up to the east-northeast. There might be a little bit of a westward pole, or I should say more of a due north pole, according to the ICON model, just based on this upper-level synoptic pattern. Now, I'm bringing up the UK model because we can finally see far enough out with that model loop. It only goes out to 168 hours, more of a mid-range forecast model, albeit very accurate. That's why I haven't pulled it up just yet, but we're taking a very fast pace glance at it. You take this all the way to the back end of the run very, very quickly. Take a look in the Gulf, guys. We're actually expecting a very large area of strong low pressure to impact the Gulf Coast parts of Louisiana, working their way into Mississippi and Alabama. Probably going to see some pretty good wave heights with this as well, some strong swells out there off the coastline. Not really looking at anything storm surge-ish because this is not anticipated to turn into a tropical feature, so no worries in that department, but this is definitely going to elevate our rain chances. And then if you look down into the very southernmost Caribbean, there you have it. There's our low cyclone beginning to form up right in that general source region we've been talking about. So the UK model is officially on board. Alrighty, folks, we're going to wrap up this very bizarre iteration of Weather Center Nazario. Thank you for tuning in, guys, and I hope to see you tonight at our 8 p.m. Tropics Talk. I'm going to go ahead and cut the video now without as much of a lengthy outro because this is probably going to be a little more tedious to edit, having to compile my video from the iPhone, turn the audio off, and then tune in to my microphone. So, guys, tune in tonight, 8 p.m. Tropics Talk. We're going to nix tomorrow because, unfortunately, I have familial plans. I won't be able to tend to you guys, but we're going to get that segment done one way or another, and that'll be tonight at 8 p.m. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for taking some time out of your afternoon to join me today. And once again, please share this page and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and turn on those notifications. Until next time, guys, this is Weather Center Nazario signing out.